Hello everybody, I'm Matthew Snow Samurai Hex, and welcome back to another episode of Zero to Hero FM24 Edition, with your manager, Dominic Brandon, and me, Matthew. I said that weirdly, but we're just going to roll with it. So, last episode was a season review of a season with Musa Shino, where we got promoted to from the J3 League as champions to the J2 League. Now I said in that episode that I wasn't happy with that style of video for Zero to Hero. Well I'd already kinda of gotten through this current year, this current season, uh already to do the same style as in last episode. You're just gonna have to deal with me talking about a season that you hardly ever see. Um, the episode after, I promise you it'll return back to like the three episodes per season with what, three games in a um, season or whatever, and of course the transfer special at the start of the season. But, we are champions of the J3 division. Kawasaki Frontale in Sagan Toso, I think it's Sagan Toso. Yeah, Sagan Toso or Sagan Toso got promoted alongside us. In the end, Fujieda got relegated. Uh, I don't think no. Ahimi won in the playoff final with the Japanese Football League. So yeah, promotion and expectations. Like I said, we're leaving this club um, when we become a top half on paper J2 division side. So this season in the J2. Um, I'm expecting survival, like whether it's final day survival or last place, last place before the relegation zone final. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. But if you look at Mushishina, they've well, they were promoted in 2013, which was the first time they were promoted to the J3 League in the game, and I think in real life as well. I don't know why that suddenly got a picture. Oh, it's because I've installed a new park, a new. Um, Logo pack. So that's what the Kanazawa Olympic Park Athletic Stadium looks like. You finally get to see what it looks like, but yeah. Um, we were promoted in 2030, immediately relegated. Promoted 2036, and then ended up getting promoted, and then ended up getting promoted in 2038, before coming straight back down, and going straight back up as champions, before going straight back down, and then. They were in relegation battles for when we joined in 2044, where we got 11th place. Last season, of course, we uh, the season well the season beforehand we just missed out on the playoff in the playoff semi final, getting knocked out in the playoffs and all that stuff. And last season uh, we won the J3 league, so it's our if we we'll get safe and we survive this league in J2, it'll be the first time. Mishishina will be playing in it for a second season in a row, which is what we can hope for. So, we're on the 1st of April, so the transfer window literally just ended. Um, before we get into the transfers, let's look at the two brothers. Um, so, Callum Braddon, uh, I don't know if I told you, I moved into Bolton because he was not getting a club. Um, and I thought I'll also up his, his like, rep. Um, so he's three star rep now, and he's at Bolton, who are in League 2, who are currently second and expected to finish 12th. So he's not doing too badly with them. Um, if we go to the other brother, Ryan Brannan, I moved him to Lot in the th third league of Germany, um, where they are currently 7th. When they're expected to finish ninth, and he's also got the same exact rep as his other brother. Um, also, on the other hand, our manager uh, has a two-star reputation, and I probably should be asking for another continent, uh, another a continental sea license. Um, but I kind of don't want to get the high rep, highest rep, like three and a half stars, and get an easy job in the Premier League again, like we did with Neil Brannan. I don't want that, so I'm not going to be doing that. I'm going to be Maybe doing a bit more, more what I feel is better for the story and better for what I want to do. Um, it's, we've kind of gone from the lower leagues of 
zero rep and zero um, coaching badges all the way to best manager in the world at the time which we did with Neil Brannan of course so with his sons two of them are AI control I'm only messing them about with them a bit when they haven't got a club uh, when they haven't got a club for a while I might move them to a different nation so of course one's been moved to Germany one of them's been kept in England because they were the only available jobs that were quite good that I think would suit them um, while us on the other hand we're just going to be doing whatever the hell we want to do for until the same ends basically uh, if we want to do a bit of a build a nation like Loki Doki's doing as of I'm recording this in mid June um, then yeah um, otherwise it'll be like yeah um, we go from club to club, maybe win a title or something, then maybe move to a different club in the same league and win a title with them. Who knows? But yeah, that is how the managers are doing. Now, if we go to transfers, so no one left on a release, uh, on a release. However, we sold four players. Fumi uh, Yamashita, once again, one of those players that came in on a free transfer and we sold for a load of money. Um, he played a few times for us, but Omiya ended up paying £3,000 for him, which I'm really happy about. Um, Atsuya Maraki, um, who didn't even play once first, but ended up getting £215,000 from Heracles Almelo, which is just overpowered. Takumi Kobayashi uh, did play quite often for us, but last season kind of fell off the waypoint. Um, we sold him for £500,000. This wasn't even us trying to sell him. Heracles Almelo just came in for the offer and we're like, okay, 200,000? No, but why is it 500,000? And they said no. So I said, okay, 250,000 now, 250,000 in three years. And they said yes. So that's how the deal went. And then Subasa Iguchi uh, was also sold this time to Verspa. He hardly played last season and yeah, we got a nice profit. From him on a free transfer, selling him for a load of money as well, which is all good. And then we kept with the either the free loans, um, knockoff one, and the free transfers. So Takahiro Ito comes in as our new goalkeeper. This was actually direct football, to be honest. He signed it uh, in a halfway through last season, where he was like, "Okay, this guy can come in on a free transfer once his contract runs up," which he did. And yeah, he's joined from Nagasaki on a free transfer. Takashi Arai has also joined us as our new left winger striker. Uh, for you, for Yuki Kitai, also joins us as our another centre back on f on a loan with no wages paid from Yokohama, our, our senior affiliate. I mean, Daisuke Miyachi is another player that's joined us. Just we needed a right back, left back, and he was the best one to get. And I thought, okay, we're going for a loan. Because not any, uh, the only ones on free transfers for two and a half stars that could play in his position. They could both play both well on the right and left fullback positions. So yeah, Nagoya. Um, we went in for the Nagoya man and we have to pay a bit of his wages, but it's not much. Like now, I'm a, I'm willing to go for. I was only willing to go for over a thousand pound for the really really good players um for now i'm willing to go to about three thousand or two thousand or more for the really really good players and then went out to two thousand or less uh, and then if we get promoted somehow next time it'll probably be like three thousand for the good, really good players and or four thousand for the really good players or something like that but i've got a motto where i'm not going over a certain milestone so if they're asking for that most i just do a click red non-negotiable you get this much amount and then if they say no then oh well we can't get them if they say yes and they probably have to give them high um appearance fees and stuff which i'm willing to do because some of them don't play off with more to be honest um takeshi masuda another player that joins us um dm right back horse play center back right winger and um, midfielder center and can be trained to be left winger back he comes in on a loan from Yokohama as well. Masao Nishikawa comes in as our new striker. He's just a fringe player. I don't expect him to play much, but 
getting that selling fee of about three hundred thousand pound for him. That'd be brilliant. Kisho Kaneko is another player that c comes in for for us. Um, striker can just play AMC and right wing can also be trained to be left wing. Um, fringe player, thousand pound per week could be sold for a profit. And uh, Takuya Tamuki, uh, right winger, uh, squad player. He's a bit better than the others, I would say, because he's had fast for squad player. But thousand pound per week can get about hundred thousand pound for him if we decide to sell him if he does not play nine. Halfway through the year. As the transfer is over, so now let's look at the results. So, we didn't do too good in pre season, only beating our senior affiliate Yokohama. Uh, however, in the first game of the season, we beat Sanuki and beat Gunma and drew Totori and FC Ahsoka and Honda before losing to Amiya in the J League Cup first round. Uh, and then we went on a good run, beating Kumamoto, Kawasaki Fatali, Yokohama. F. Marinos and Fukuoka uh, and Amiya with Andre, so we knocked out all the Japanese League Cup in the first round. Uh, and FC Machida, we ended up winning 3 0. Now, before we show you where we are in the league, I want to just want to quickly show you Yokohama F. Marinos um, because it's quite crazy. They had this manager who I actually kept on. Uh, I've always I wanted to show him a few months years ago, but I couldn't in the seasons at least. Um, Shohei Yamane, and I've kept him as uh, like a, kept his uh, staff thing because I thought he had quite a good staff um, season. So he started off with like Yokohama, ended up winning so much with Yokohama, ended up going to Al Nasir and Al Etihad, and then when I was with Neil Brannan at I think Crystal Palace or something like that or Napoli or something he went to Tottenham and he had a failure and then just retired but yeah um, as you can see he was there for six seasons he won five league titles and six cups including Champions League and so Yokohama the most successful team in Japan and so they won it the season he left, again got second a few times and then just tumbled down the leagues. And so when we joined in 2024 with the new manager, um, we at Mushishino, um, they had just been relegated. And yeah, and they're now not doing too good in the JT League as the best team in Japan. It's just such a shock. And that is why I love Japanese football. For some reason, football manager managed to keep the Japanese football rhythm alive. Like, with Japan, you can get players like... You can get... I mean, you can get teams promoted and then win the title in a couple of seasons. You can get teams who just won the title and then get relegated a few seasons later. Like, in England, that will never happen. Uh, in Spain, it will never happen. In Italy, in France and in Germany, it just never would happen. Maybe Germany a bit more. And uh, considering teams like Hertha and Hamburg and Hanover being relegated over the course of a few years. Um, but yeah, and Schalke, of course. Um, but yeah, um, just I thought very interesting last few years for Yokohama, um, F Marinos at least. But yeah, we're expected to be in a relegation battle. We're currently top of the league by four points. Yeah, we've yet to lose a game. We're the only team yet to lose a game. We've drawn three, which some of them we could have probably won, but we've won games we probably should have lost, including against Yokohama, F Marinos. So yeah, um, we're just doing amazingly well. And now to skip ahead for more of the save, and hopefully we do even better. Let's quickly look at the transfers because the transfer window has ended again. Um, so come um, summer, we sold Hitoshi Takianagi to Yokohama. Uh, for £450,000. We weren't wanting him, but we weren't selling him. I thought he could do a decent job for another year. I was going to sell him next season. But yeah, they came in with like 300000 We upped it to 450000 over the course of a few years. Um, Daiki Otomo, another player that left to Minebea Mitsumi. Um, he, we, he we did want to sell, so we got some money for him. And because of us being in a league up, we're getting more money for players 
that can do jobs in J3 and J2 uh, as backups, so that's all good, and uh, getting more money. Uh, Uday Yakota was also sold to Verspa. Um, he came in on loan in 2045. Joined us permanently on a free transfer the next season after, and hardly played this season because he wasn't good enough. Uh, but yeah, Verspa signed to him. And then Nishio, uh, Masakiko Nishio, who I was not one to sell, but I noticed that his performances this season were not good enough compared to last season where he was doing quite well when he did play. So uh, we've got £400,000 for him, which I'm really happy with. And then people that joined, so Emeka Okaruchi is our first ever foreign player. He's our new centre back, and yeah, I think if he plays a lot, he can get to that full star potential, let's say, because we are improving the youth and mm, training facilities with all this money coming in. Also improving the youth recruitment and junior coaching, which is always good, considering they had minus one when we joined, so they've gone up in massive low, which I'm really happy about. So yeah, um, he joined. Um, Masato Uzaki joins us, our new left back. Comes in on a free transfer from Mariasu. He was out of club for a few months, but we decided to just pick him up. Um, Kazuki Yoshikawa, a left winger, another player that uh, had just recently been released by Excelsior. Uh, I thought, get him in. Uh, he's 32, so we might not be able to sell him for a profit. But he can do this job for a couple of years, I'd hope. Um, Kazuki Yoshikawa, is that just the exact same player we just talked about, Matthew? You're an idiot. Um, Kazuki Mishima, our guy mixed up, and comes in on free transfer from Warsaw. Um, another older player that might not be able to get a profit for him, but he looks very, very good. Um, yeah, so we signed him. Fabian Garcia is another player we have signed. On a loan from Godoy Cruz, uh, he hardly plays for them and he's been with them a few years now. Um, but for us, he can do a decent job for a year and be basically that, get us do a decent job for the year and all that stuff. And then John Baronetia, uh, I don't know how, uh, Basque. Hispan, uh, Espanol, I oh, had to ask for saying it, I was like that. Uh, Basque, a Spanish player. He is our new main choice left back and he looks amazing. I know he's a bit old, um, but he was at Millwall playing in the Championship. He was playing for Cagliari in Serie A. He played for Osasuna in La Liga. So he's a very, very, very well rounded and good player. And he's come here for his last few seasons of his career and hopefully do a job for us. And we also have Yoshitaka Amori joining us um, once his contract ends at the end of the season. He is with Oita but he's currently on loan at Kitakishi. Um So yeah, hopefully he'll do a decent job for next season. If not, we'll loan him out or whatever. I don't know how good he will be. Um, to be He says he'll be good but I don't know how good he'll be on paper. Uh, when he gets there, because the scouts aren't the best. But yeah, he's joining uh, in uh, January when Dread Football agreed to transfer in summer. And results. So, um, we haven't got many games left now, actually. Um, so, since last time, which I think was the Machida game, we lost Oita, beat Tokyo Verde, beat Mariasu and Chiba, drew with Amiya, Yamagata we lost. Hachinami, Tosu and Gunma were won. Drew with Tsunuki and beat Tori. Lost the Honda. Beat Minabe and Mitsumi in the Empress Cup second round. Then beat FC Gifu, Soka, Kumamoto and Kawasaki from Tali. Kawasaki from Tali in the Empress Cup third round. So we're in the fourth round. And then we had a bit of poor run of results. Drawing through Kuoka and Kawasaki. Losing to Machida and Sozo Osaka in the Empress Cup fourth round. Beating Oita. Drawing, losing to Katoki Verdi and drawing Mariasu. And currently, we're still top of the league. We're getting closer. Um, we're quite close to getting promoted, but Yamagata are getting close enough to us, so we might not get promotion as champions. But it's just so strange that if we get promoted as champions, 
Oh, they've only spent two seasons in J2 this FM cycle. Like, you would expect it to be hard getting promoted with Nagano as champions and then it'd be getting promoted again as champions in J2 back with Nagano. It's even harder to do it second time in a row with the champions as Mr. Shino and then champions as Mr. Shino again in J2. I don't know if it'll happen, but I'm hoping it now. If we go to season preview, we've actually got what we're expected to be doing is a top of J2 side on paper. We're 10th best team in the league, and yeah, we're, it's going all well. So, uh, if we do get it from it, I'm probably doing one more season like I did with Nagano in J1. But yeah, I'm just so excited for this team. It's a really good team, and I think transfers, way, the ways we've been doing the transfers, have just been doing so good because we've improved. Um, the training and youth facilities, the youth crewman and junior coaching, and it's just going so well. So, we've only played three games since last time beating Shiba, losing to Amiya, and beating Yamagata. And the Yamagata has sealed us as promotion. So, guaranteed promotion. We just need a couple more results, I think, against other sides. I'm hoping Yamagata kind of step up. And yeah, actually, we just need one more win. Just need one more win and hoping Yamagata to slip up. And yeah, we'll be champions. So I hope that can happen. And did that happen? Well, we beat Hachinomaru, we beat Tosu, and we drew with Gifu. So you bet it did. We are promoted as champions. So back to back champions uh, in J3 and then J2 and back to back promotions. And it's twice we've done that this FM cycle. First with Nagano um, back at the start of FM when we were playing this exact same save with Neil Brannan. Now his son Dominic Brannan has done the exact same thing and in fact he's actually done one battle because he's actually won last season's in day three best manager of the year. Now last time around Neil Brannan didn't win it because Nara were just doing so much better than they were expected to do. So their manager got the best manager of the year in J3 when Neil Brannan did got second and then he won the J2. So yeah, Dominic Brannan's also already a more successful manager than um, Neil Brannan was at this early point in their careers. Yeah, the team going up with the Withers is Yamagata, um, expected they were really close to us and FC Machida um, got promoted alongside them in the playoffs. Tim's going down again, Sanuki got relegated, Gunma got relegated, and Hachinori got relegated. Um, Gunma were recently promoted side, as you can see, a recent relegated side, as you can see there. So, a big shock to see them relegated. Um, Sanuki and Hachinori, Hachinori were expected to be down there. Sanuki, a bit of a surprise, also getting relegated at that point. Um, Towards of us, we've actually got down 10th to 12th. Um, but I'm going to give no matter what, I'm going to give another season in J1 and see if we can keep Mushishino United surviving in J1 next season. And then we'll maybe look to move if we do well with Mushishino. Who knows, we might have another couple of years at Mushishino. I just don't know. Um, but yeah, promotion. A bit of day job vu. If we go to best players, we've got Adrian Miando, he's just so good. Um, Sasaki. And Kishimoto also did quite well. Kaneko, Kamenoshima, Tanuki, Uchida, Arai, and Ito are quite good as well. So, yeah, um, really good season. But, yeah, a good season. Um, and next season, we'll be back to the regular schedule of per one half of like or quarter of a season or a third of a season per episode in three season three episodes per season that sort of stuff so um if you like this video give the video a like subscribe to the channel hit the bell for push notifications so you never miss an upload um comment comment uh if you've been on this long say hajimi and who's a beast and i know you will have watched till the end um but yeah um that's all i want to say um matthew what's the some hex and I'll see you all next time. Hex Sand Gout. Bye everybody.